Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome to November. Spooky season might be over out there, but it'll never be over in here. Anyway, books. I've picked out 10 books that I want to read in November. Two of them are review copies of things coming out in November, Two of them are review copies from October that I didn't get to and I really want to read and review, and the rest are mostly historical fiction, because I mentioned in my previous video that I'm in a really historical fiction mood and autumn kind of does that to me, so I've got a bunch of historical fiction that I really want to read. I've picked 10 books because I typically read around 15 books in a month, and that gives me a bit of leeway. Let's go. First of all, I'm gonna do a little bit of cheating. For the past two or three months, I have promised myself that I would read this. This is The Square of Sevens by Laura Shepard Robinson. It's a big old English historical fiction novel, a mystery tale, and I was really, really excited to read it for a long time. This is my third What I'm Going to Read This Month video, and it's the third time this book has appeared. But the reason it's a bit of a cheat is that I've actually started it. I'm about halfway through. I said I wanted to read it two months ago. I said I wanted to read it in October and now I'm actually reading it, so it's not going to appear in next month's video. I will have finished it. I'm halfway through and it's really, really, really good. I will review it soon. This one is hopefully and probably going to be very, very special. This is The Vaster Wilds. This is the newest novel from American author Lauren Groff, and I absolutely adore what she does. Her novel Matrix, which you can see just here somewhere. Yep, yep, there. Matrix is so great. It's such a fantastic piece of historical fiction. And I'm really, really hoping that The Vaster Wilds lives up to Matrix. I'm sure it will. It's had great reviews. People seem to love it. She is an absolute poet. It. Her literature is so gorgeous. The way that she writes is hypnotic and so aggressive. There's something kind of demanding about the way that she writes. She's not asking for your attention. She doesn't care whether you read the book or not. The book just kind of exists. It's a statement. That's often how her stories feel. They have presence. They have weight and density to them. As you read her stories, you just feel transfixed by something that is not just confident, but something that simply exists as a matter of fact. That's how it feels. It's very difficult to describe. Reading her books feels like reading a beautiful rock. It exists whether you care or not, whether you want it to or not, and it is beautiful. There is a density and a power to everything she writes, and I really hope that I feel that in The Vaster Wilds. I'm sure I will. Another historical novel that I'm very, very excited to read is North Woods. This is by Daniel Mason, and I've never read anything he's written before. Apparently he's a doctor, and he writes novels in his spare time, and people really, really like his stuff. My friend Rick did a video talking about this, and he was really, really captivated by it. He was amazed by this novel. I saw it in a bookshop. I kind of ummed and ahed about getting it. It sounded pretty good. Maybe I'll check it out. I go home, I go online, I see Rick's video, I watch it, and I think, oh shit, I need to run back out and get that book now. This was the last book that I bought in London before I moved up to Scotland. I was so excited to bring it with me. I put it in a little shoebox <laughs> along with the Vaster Wilds and <laughs> I assumed they would be the first books I read when I arrived. That turned out to not be true at all, but I will be reading this in November. I can't remember exactly what it's about. It's set in New England, and it's the story of a home over hundreds of years. It's kind of the story of America, and it follows multiple people's stories who all live in this one house, this cabin. And so it's kind of a short story collection all set in one house, I think. And so it starts like 400 years ago and moves slowly towards the present. I can't wait to check it out. One of the review copies that I had for October that I didn't get around to reading is The Goodbye Cat. This is by Hiro Arikawa, who wrote The Traveling Cat Chronicles. If you haven't read that novel, it's really, really beautiful. It's sorrowful, undeniable but very sweet and very kind and kind of soothing. And this is a short story collection all about cats. So Hiro Arikawa really loves cats and so do I. This came out in the UK on the 12th of October and I was hoping to review it. I didn't. I'm gonna try again in November. It's translated by Philip Gabriel, who's a really famous translator in the Japanese to English translation space. And so I'm sure the translation is gonna be solid. The stories are going to be great. I'm sure I'm going to love this. It just didn't feel like spooky season vibes, so I kept putting it off. But this is a review copy. I was sent this, 
I'm really excited to read it. I'm going to review it hopefully in November. And then we have Lamb by Matt Hill. This was published by Dead Ink Books in October. They sent me this finished copy. It's really, really beautiful, great cover. And again, I didn't get around to reading it. I've seen a lot of people talking about it online. It's doing really, really well, and I'm so happy for Dead Ink and for Matt Hill. I think this is his debut novel. Aaliyah Whiteley and Lucy McKnight Hardy both have nice things to say about it on the back, and they are authors that I really, really like. So I'm sure I'm gonna love this. It's been called a mystery, it's been called a thriller, it's been called horror, but I'm still not entirely sure what it actually is and what my experience of reading it will be. So I'm going to try and read and review this in November, just like The Goodbye Cat. Dead Ink are an amazing indie publisher. They now run their own bookshop out of Liverpool. I'm really, really happy for them. I'd love to visit the bookshop. They're great people, they publish amazing things, and I'm gonna do my best to read and review this very soon. One of the two books coming out in November that I'm planning to read is Critical Hits. This is an essay collection about video games. I love video games, and I'm a fan of quite a few of the authors in here. Most notably, Nana Kwame Ajebrenya, who this year brought out his debut novel, Chain Gang All Stars, which I reviewed and absolutely loved. And I also adore his short story collection, Friday Black. And I know he's a big video game fan because it was either in the introduction or the afterword of Chain Gang All Stars, he talked about his love for video games and he talked about a mechanic that's in the first Metroid Prime game, which is a game I adore from the GameCube, and how that mechanic inspired an aspect of Chain Gang All Stars. So that was a really cool thing to learn. He's a great guy, he's got an essay in here. And this was edited by Carmen Maria Machado, and I have never read her, and she's really beloved. People adore everything she writes, and I've still never read her. I keep meaning to read her stuff. The other editor is J. Robert Lennon, and as far as I know, that name does not ring a bell. But what a great selection of people. This is a really cool thing. There are essays on loads of video games, and I'm really interested to see what all of these authors have to say about gaming. I love video games. Where hobbies are concerned, video games were my first love, and I still play them pretty much every day. So I'm really, really excited to check this out. This was sent to me from Serpent's Tale. It comes out in November, I hope. Second guessing myself now. I think so, yeah. Anyway, you'll probably get a review from me soon. Then we have Rouge by Mona Awad. She's the author of Bunny, which is a book that I really, really enjoyed. Bunny is a surreal piece of dark academia that I thought was fantastic. Interestingly, I did a review of Bunny a few months ago, and I get a lot of weird comments on that video every day from weird people. And when I say they're weird people, what I mean is they are people who are very angry at the success of the novel and do not like its fan base. These comments all sound like they're from people who have friends who love Bunny and talk about that novel all the time and I guess make it part of their personality. And the people leaving the comments are very angry about that, very offended by it. They read like they're offended by the success of the novel and they want to be different. They want to be not like the other girls. It's really, really weird and I really want it to stop because I don't know why they're coming into my comment section and bitching about their lives. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna read Rouge in November. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in my list of things to read in October and I didn't get to it. Hoping to get to it this time because it sounds like a weird modern gothic, maybe horror tinged thing. And on the back, Paul Tremblay liked it and I love Paul Tremblay's writings. And again, this is from the author of Bunny. This will be the second novel of hers that I've read, but I think she's written four or five books at this point. If I like this, I'm definitely tracking down her other things because she is best known for Bunny, and I need to see what else she's done. So we'll start with Rouge, and we'll go from there. And now for something very, very special, or what I hope will be very special. This is a novel that Pushkin Press unveiled a few months ago on Instagram. I saw it, my heart stopped, my breathing stopped, and I reached out to them for a review copy, absolutely desperate to read this. What's funny about me and review copies is that I often get them months ahead of a book coming out, but I don't really want to read it or even touch it until the lead up to the book's release is in sight because usually you need to publish a review around the time of release. I've never been given an embargo before, but I don't know, it's polite and it makes sense. But I kind of misjudged this because I remembered very clearly this book is out in November. Great, I'll review it in November. It's out today, the day that you're watching this. Not the day I'm recording it, but the day this video goes up, this book is out. And so I have missed it. I have missed the deadline. I will put my video out as quickly as possible, I promise. 
This is the novelization of the story of Mary Shelley writing Frankenstein. Ah! Oh. Now we kind of got that in Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson, which is a book that I pretty enjoyed. I thought it was pretty good. I never talk about it, but I did like it. Some people called it transphobic. At the time I wasn't out and paying that much attention, so I'm not sure. And I don't have a copy anymore, so I can't confirm that, but I quite liked Frankenstein. Anyway, this is an entire novelization of Mary Shelley's life leading up to the publication of Frankenstein and the process of writing it, and I cannot wait to read this. My review will be coming very, very, very soon. The Disenchantment by Celia Bell is a book I kind of bought on a whim. I was in Foils, I think, on Charing Cross Road in London, a good few months ago now. I bought this because it sounded great. It's an historical novel set in the court of Louis XIV, and it's a queer lesbian love story. A queer romance, historical fiction, set in France, and I've talked before about how I always love historical novels set in France, whether or not the author is French. And so I had to pick this up, I was compelled to buy it, and then I put it on my TBR, and it just sat there, nice and comfortable. I would look at it occasionally and go, nah, today's not the day. Hopefully this month is the month that I read this. We'll find out. And finally we have Fine Shade by Kate Griffin. The story about me learning about this novel and picking it up is kind of cute. I went to an event hosted by Viper Press, and that event had four authors all sat around, all published by Viper, talking about their books, talking about horror, talking about the gothic, and one of the authors there was Katrina Ward. I absolutely love the works of Katrina Ward. I have reviewed her books multiple times. The Last House on Needless Street remains one of my favorite novels, and her book that came out this year, Looking Glass Sound, was incredible. She watched my video and she thanked me for my review and she was really impressed with my analysis and that meant the absolute world to me. Kat Ward is a lovely person. But another one of the authors there was Kate Griffin an author I'd never heard of, who's written quite a few books, and this is her newest novel, Fine Shade. And Kate Griffin is fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, on stage, in front of the audience, she had everyone cackling. She is a really, really funny, witty, sardonic person, and I found her an absolute delight. I got chatting with her afterwards, I bought the book, and she signed it, and I've been excited to read it ever since. Then I put it off for a while, eh, other things got in the way, blah blah blah, and then she asked me on Twitter if I'd read it yet. <laughs> which I haven't, sorry Kate. But this is a governess novel. Kate Griffin talked about the history of the governess within fiction, most famously Jane Eyre, and Henry James's The Turn of the Screw, which inspired Mike Flanagan's TV show The Haunting of Bly Manor. Governesses are a big deal in gothic fiction. And so Kate Griffin wrote a governess story, a piece of gothic historical fiction surrounding the governess, and that's always gonna be a laugh. I'm really, really excited to check this out at last, and November feels like the time. I am ready to read Fine Shade. There you go. There are 10 books that I'm excited to read. It's gotten really dark in here because I think it's about to rain. It's funny, I have a window, and I have a ring light, and together they should work quite nicely, but when the sun fails, the ring light is not enough. Anyway, I hope you're interested in these. My review of Mary will be coming very, very soon, and we'll kind of take it from there. I have a Patreon. Subscribe for books.